Well, hello everyone. I hope you're having a blessed and beautiful day today. So um, today we're going to be in Exodus. I'm going to be going through a few different scriptures today. Um, I'm also going to be looking at my notes over here. So if you see me looking over here, that's what I'm looking at. Um, so today I was looking up the meaning of the word Exodus and it came across um, the Greek translation for Exodus means going out or exit. So I thought that was kind of interesting, um, which means it tells the story of Israel going out of Egypt and to the redemption and Passover story within this biblical story of Moses. Um, redemption in Exodus can be defined as the deliverance from the power of an invisible enemy wanting to destroy uh, what God has created and ordained. And it is also the enjoyment of the resulting freedom that comes with putting your trust and faith in God. So let's turn to Exodus. Actually, we're going to start off in Exodus 1, verse 15 and 18, or through 18. Um, if you want to grab your Bibles, you can join with me as I read um, these different verses. If not, you can just listen in, and that's okay too. Um, so we're going to be in um, Exodus 1, starting in verse 15. And it says, uh, Then the king of Egypt spoke to the Hebrew midwives, of whom the name of one was uh, Shephara, and the name of the other Pua. And he said, When you do the duties of the midwife for the Hebrew women, and see them, on the birth stools, if it is a son, then you shall kill him. But if it is a daughter, then you shall, then and then she shall live. But the midwives feared God and did not do as the king had commanded. Um, so the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said to them, "Why have you done this thing and saved the male children?" Now, um, you know we can see all through history. Whoops. Sorry. Uh, we can see all through history how Satan is always trying to prevent the Messiah from coming. He's always trying to fill the hearts of man to um, create hatred for um, males and trying to prevent the uh, Messiah from coming. Um, he puts evil into the hearts of man to prevent Jesus from coming uh from him coming the first time and he's doing it today in today's world to prevent him coming um, the second time um, he thought this king thought that by having all the boys killed that he, that he would finally have his moment um, but Satan didn't know that Moses would not only be used mightily by God but that the future mother of Jesus um, who would conceive Jesus eventually would become or would be from the line the bloodline of Moses so now in Exodus 2 it begins with the mother of Moses loving her son um, but yet she had to trust God she had to put her faith in God to know um, and put it above everything else to know that the very water that she was going to put her son in was the same water that the Pharaoh used and um, not only that but the same Pharaoh that takes people takes her her people to use as slaves so um, she had to put literally put her baby's life in God's hands and trust that God would protect her um, against the murderous plot um, coming against the boys so she had to put her faith in God and put the baby in the water um, and just and, and pray and she had to trust that he would protect not only her but the baby that she loved so much and I couldn't imagine doing that um, it takes a lot of faith and a lot of trust to be able to do that and I'm not sure you know being a mom I'm not sure I would have been able to do that so it's encouraging to read a story of a mom that loved her son so much that you know she trusted above everything else and it all ended up working out in the end. Um, okay, so um, Exodus 2 is the story of how he was born. And we're going to read in um, verse 6. 
and it says, and when she opened it, or the, um, the ark that the baby was in, when she opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the baby wept. So she had compassion on him and said, this is one of the Hebrew children. Then his sister said to Pharaoh, Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and call the nurse for you from the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for you? And the Pharaoh's daughter said to her, go. So the maiden went out and called the child's mother. Then Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this child away and nurse him for me and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed him. And the child grew, and she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. So she called his name Moses, saying, Because I drew him out of the water. So in the end, it worked out. In the, in the end, in a way, um, the mom would still be able to, she still came, and she was still, you know, was with her son, even though she had to watch another woman kind of raise her son. Um, and then we're going to go over to Exodus three eleven, and it says, but Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? So he said, I will certainly be with you and this shall be the sign to you that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. Then Moses said to God, Indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they say to me, What is his name? What shall I say then? Say to them. And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And let's see here. Moses was becoming fearful for what may happen in the future. He was starting to question and, and not really putting his trust in God and he was not really uh, putting his faith in him. He was kind of um, thinking about all of his doubts and stuff and um, uh, let me see, I lost my place, hang on. <laughs> um, Moses was becoming fearful of what may happen. This is so much like a, us today and how we react. We pick ourselves apart and I know I'm guilty of that as well. Um, and we give every excuse as to why we can't share the gospel. But God knows our hearts and he will continually comfort us as he did with Moses. Um, you know, I myself have, have, you know, tried to pick myself apart that I don't speak well or I don't um, I'm I'm too scared or I'm nervous or what are they what if they reject me or what if they laugh my face or what if what if what if and I always try to give myself an excuse of why I can't but really there is no excuse of why you can't because God will always lead you um, where he wants you to go just as he did with Moses um, so we're going to move over to chapter 4 verse 10 Let's see here. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Yeah, verse 10. Then Moses said to the Lord, O my Lord, I am not eloquent neither uh, before nor since you have spoken to your servant, but I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. So the Lord said to him, Who has made man's mouth, or who makes the mute, the deaf, the seeing, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with your mouth and teach you what you shall say and that's so um such an example of us today as well and it's it's not until we finally break those barriers and break those lines and finally you know give up and allow god to use us that he can finally do so and no matter what how we speak if we speak slow if we have a stutter or whatever god will always use those circumstances for his glory um when God is placing something on our hearts to share, that is for the kingdom. Whenever he's placing something on our hearts, there is a reason why he places it there. And there is a person that he wants to hear, um, whether it's one person or a hundred people. There's um, always a reason why God puts places something on your heart and, uh, and allows you to speak it. And it's for his glory and for the kingdom. Um, he will give you the strength and the means to do anything that he has called you to do. Um, not everyone has a speech of pure eloquence, but when it comes to sharing the gospel and bringing souls to Christ, he and he alone will guide the tongue in perfect speech to whom he wants it to reach. Um, 
we have to sometimes not only step out in faith, but to also put our faith in Christ, to know that He leads um, and He will provide all of our needs in every way. Um, he will provide, you know, the perfect speech or, you know, whatever we say, our testimony, um, however we choose to share it, God will always use it for His benefit and for His glory. And it will always reach somebody who God is wanting it to reach. And sometimes we beat ourselves up and we think that we sound stupid or, you know, I should have said it this way or should have said it that way. But in reality, the way you said it was perfect and it actually helped somebody and it actually turned somebody's heart to Christ. So you can't um, beat yourself up over, you know, how you speak or the lack of speech or whatever because God will always use it for um, his purposes. Um, so then in chapter 5 of Exodus, the Pharaoh um, is setting himself up to be God or like a God. Um, all-knowing and all-powerful and he even comes against the God of the universe and also is directed by the very one who God created which is Satan himself. Pharaoh is a form of the Antichrist and and we will um, he's a form of the Antichrist that we see in Revelation and I will link those puzzle pieces together here in a second. Um, let's go ahead let's see so chapter 5 is the encounter with uh, Pharaoh um, and I'll read a few, so we'll do five, so one, verse one, Moses is asking Pharaoh to let my people go, and in verse two it says, and Pharaoh said, who is the Lord, that I should obey his voice and let Israel go? I do not know the Lord, no will I let Israel go. Um, so they said, the God of the Hebrews has met with us, please let us go three days journey into the desert and sacrifice to the Lord our God lest he fall upon us with pestilence or with the sword then the king of Egypt said to them Moses and Aaron why do you take the people from their work get back to your labor and so then through here it's kind of like a verbal argument between the two and and the Pharaoh is gaining or um, digging in his heels you know into what he's doing, you know, trying to be like a God, setting himself up to be God and wanting people to worship him instead of the God of the Bible. Um, okay, and then if we move over to chapter 7, we're going to read chapter 7 together before we start talking about uh, or linking the water turning into blood, but we're going to read chapter 7 together, so now would be a time to get your Bibles and join with me if you wish to do so. Uh, so chapter 7 verse 1 on through it says, So the Lord said to Moses, See, I have made you as God to Pharaoh, and Aaron your brother shall be your prophet. You shall speak all that I command you, and Aaron your brother shall tell, tell Pharaoh to send the children of Israel out of this land, and I will harden Pharaoh's heart and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. But the Pharaoh will not heed you, so that I may lay my hand on Egypt and bring my armies and my people, the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt by great judgments. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I stretch out my hand on Egypt and bring out the children of Israel from among them. Then Moses and Er. Aaron did so just as the Lord commanded them, so they did. And Moses was 80 years old and Aaron was 83 years old when they spoke to Pharaoh. Then the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron saying, When Pharaoh speaks to you saying, Show a miracle for yourselves, then you shall say to Aaron, Take your rod and cast it before Pharaoh and let it become a serpent. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and they did so just as the Lord commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before the, his servants, and it became a serpent. But Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers, so the magicians of Egypt, um, they also did in like manner with their enchant enchantments. For every man threw down his rod, and they became serpents. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rod, and Pharaoh's heart grew hard, and he did not heed them as to the Lord 
as the Lord had said. Verse 14, so the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart is hard. He refuses to let the people go. Go to Pharaoh in the morning when he goes out to the water and you shall stand by the river's bank to meet him and the rod which has turned the turn to a serpent you shall take in your hand and you shall say to him the lord god of the hebrews has sent me to you saying let my people go that they may serve me in the wilderness but indeed until now you would not hear thus says the lord by this you shall know that i am the lord behold i will strike the waters which are in the rivers with the rod that is in my hand and they shall be turned to blood and the fish that are in the river shall die, the river shall stink, and the Egyptians will loathe to drink the water of the river. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying to Aaron, Take your rod and stretch out your hand over the waters of Egypt, over their streams, over their rivers, and over their ponds, and over their pools of water, and they may become blood. And there shall be blood throughout the land of Egypt, both in buckets of wood and pitchers of stone. And Moses and Aaron did so, just as the Lord had commanded. So he lifted up the rod and stuck it in the water that were, that were in the river in the sight of Pharaoh and in the sight of his servants. And all the waters that were in the river were turned to blood. The fish that were in the river died, and the river stank, and the Egyptians could not drink the water of the river. So there was blood throughout all the land of Egypt. Then the magicians of Egypt did so with their enchantments, and the Pharaoh's heart grew hard, and he did not heed them, as the Lord had said. And Pharaoh turned and went into his house. Neither was his heart moved by this. So the Egyptians drug, or dug all around the river for water to drink, because they could not drink the water of the river. And the seven days passed after the Lord had struck the river. So a few things in here. Um, you can see how the Pharaoh had magicians that performed these miracles also. We know that Satan is um, a great deceiver and he is also anything that God does, he tries to, to um, do it himself, but it never, um, it's never, it's a counterfeit, obviously. So, um, here in chapter 7, we read how the uh, river turned to blood. Um, God gave Pharaoh plenty of time to turn to him, and he refused all chances. And so, just like the people of today, God has been patient with people. He has been giving them chance after chance after chance to come to him, and they're still rejecting and refusing. He sends people to share the truth and make sure people have a chance to hear his name and still they refuse. And if we look at, um, you know, Exodus up to this point, it's almost as if it mirrors the tribulation, how God has warned and warned and warned, and he gives um, plenty of chances until finally his patience runs out and his judgment will begin. And it's the same way with the tribulation. It's you know, he's warned and warned and warned, and he's given chance after chance after chance until finally his patience is going to run out and his judgments are going to begin. Um, the river turned to blood as a judgment to Pharaoh for not choosing God, but it was also a redemption story for the future events that would take place on the cross. On one side of the water, you have a man that was not only a believer in God, but was also sent by God himself on the other sorry my phone died <laughs> okay on the other you have a man who thinks he is God and is filled with Satan let the invisible battle begin uh, the blood signifies the shed blood that will cover the sins of the world and also the redemption of God's chosen people, those who have placed their faith in him, those who haven't rejected him. This brings us to the Passover story. Um, the sacrificial lamb that was slain to cover the homes of those who are his. Uh, they were protected from the judgment that was to come on the land. Okay, we're going to read a little bit of chapter 12, which is the Passover story. 
and then I'll talk a little bit about how it mirrors the rapture. So it says in chapter 12, Now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be your beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak to all congregation of Israel, saying, On the tenth of this month every man shall take for himself a lamb according to the house of the father, of his father, a lamb according oops, a lamb for the household. And if the household is too small for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to his house take it according to the number of the persons, according to each man's need, and you shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. Now you shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the same month. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the houses where they eat it. Then they shall eat the flesh on that night roasted on fire with unleavened bread and with bitter herbs and shall eat it. Do not eat it raw or boiled at all with water, but roasted in the fire, its head with its legs and its entrails. You shall let none of it remain until morning, and what remains of it until morning you shall burn with fire, and thus you shall eat it, with the belt of your waist and your sandals on your feet and your staff in your hand, so you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Um, verse 12, For I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night, and will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and the beast, and against all the gods of Egypt. Okay, we're just going to finish this before my phone dies again. Um, so, we see how the blood that was covered over the doorposts covered both everybody that was inside. Why did God pass over the homes with the blood on the doorposts? Because they were covered by the blood of the Lamb. In the same way, those people who have chosen to be born again have been covered by the blood of Jesus, who was and is our sacrificial, pure Lamb of God. When the rapture happens, we are being passed over as judgment begins for the world of unbelief and rejection. The powers of darkness shall not stand, and the powers, the power of the blood will never be quenched. We are under the constant protection of the hand of God, and no matter what the pharaohs in our lives try to do, we can always, always know that even in our faith, we stand tallest. God doesn't want us to be fearful for what is to come, because just as he passed over his chosen people of Egypt, he will do the same for his people now. Just as Moses was, was being used to bring warning, and just as he was mocked and hated, in the same way people today are giving warnings and being used by God, and they are being martyred and mocked. It doesn't change the reality that the warnings are still true, and the events are still coming, and are still going to happen no matter what you do. You can try to silence the person, but God will never be silent. His word will always remain. So, there are so many people who don't want to hear the truth, or they flat out reject it, or even worse, they do things hoping to earn a better seat at the table. Sadly, these same people will be the same ones raising their fist in anger at God when he comes and they are left behind. The story of Moses is a reflection of God's love and redemption for his people. Um, those of us that have placed our faith and trust in Jesus Christ we are covered by the Lamb of God. We are covered. We will be passed over um, the, the judgments that are coming in the tribulation. We are um, part of his family, and he is shouting, let my people go. And we will be freed just as the people of Egypt um, and Israel were freed from being in bondage and in slavery. And a lot of people are in the position of Pharaoh who are trying to keep people in bondage and keep people as slaves and it's not going to happen because God will avenge for his people and that means all people, all people that are in the family of God. Now those of us that are truly in the family of God, we will be protected and there's nothing that 
um, anybody could ever do to for God to turn his back and shove us back into bondage and into slavery with the world. Once you are um, into his family, you are always in his family. And that's just the way it is. And that's just the way it is. So um, I wanted to finish that off for you guys um, before my phone dies. <laughs> so um, I'll leave that with you guys. And I hope you have a beautiful and blessed rest of your day. And until next time, may you guys be richly blessed.